Good afternoon from Royal Farms Arena. The pep band plays on behind us. It's 55-41 Terps. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Bruce Posner. And our special guest is one of the great Terps ever, Keith Booth. Bruce. Keith. Hey, Bruce. Not the most artistic game in the world, but a W nonetheless against the Final Four team. Yeah, great, great win. The win is a win this time of year, especially, you know, when you go up against a really good quality team as Loyola Chicago. You know, we knew, I'm sure Coach Turner and staff knew what they was up against going into this game. You know, not playing on a neutral court. You know, this is a neutral court. He loves the ball towards the neutral court, but they'll give Loyola Chicago credit. They, they, I'm sure they, you know, Coach Turner knew it was going to be a tough team coming in here. Merlin did the right thing in terms of sticking it out and got the W. That's all that matters. Yeah, seven points in 13 minutes was getting a little scary because they still had that Hungover for a hangover from uh, Purdue. Yeah, they had But a, they kind of straightened it out. That yeah, was they, a bad, like, 20 total minutes from the end of Purdue yeah. through most of the first half here. Woo! Yeah, well, you know, that's kind of expected. The, the best thing that can happen after a tough loss like that is to get back on the court. You yeah. know, and coming in, you know, guys want to be a little bit of, you know, a little anxiety, you know, coming in off, the, off a tough loss like that. But at the same time, you know, get those guys credit. You know, they stuck it out and got the W. Keith, let me ask you, the uh, Sticks and uh, Fernando with those – cheap fouls they got to straighten that out yeah you're not going to win games in the big 10 without them in the game yeah no, and the good thing about it is it's still early you know this guy's got enough time to learn and i'm sure they'll learn from this you know sticks coming back home and you know not really playing the kind of minutes that he wants because of foul trouble i'm sure he'll learn from that and you know bruno you know he's, he's a big horse down there you know he's learning he's getting better game by game so the fruit is pretty bright for both of those guys and i think it's just a matter of you know using these games this time of year to really prepare you for big 10 play I've got a, a more sell question because a long, long time ago in College Park, you were that guy. You looked like you could play any position, and you sort of played a 6'5 power forward against some big competition. Oh, yeah. How do you think Daryl Morsell fills that role? Does he remind you of you? Well, uh, Morsell's a very versatile player, similar to myself in that sense. You know, I think, um, you know, he's still young. You know, he has a lot to learn in terms of uh, just, just being on the court, you know, and playing through uh, little bumps and bruises, but at the same time, he's still young. You know, there's a lot of qualities that he do bring to this team, and I think as the year go on, we're going to start to see him. Yeah, I'd love to ask you what you think of the Maryland Loyola matchup on Tuesday, but I probably can't do that. Well, you know, I'm a Terp at heart. You know, I'm okay. always a Terp at heart, so Terp first and foremost. But at the yeah. same time, you know, having worked at Loyola, I wish those guys well. Yeah. You know, a lot of those guys coming back on the team, and uh -huh. so you know, we wish them well. But at the same time, I'm always going to be a diehard Maryland fan, no matter what. One more question of history, we'll let you go. You played in Cameron four times. Yes. Four How times. many did you win? Uh, two. I love them. All That's right. That's great. <laughs> I remember that for some oh, yeah. reason. Oh, yeah. That's like success. This. Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. is success. Oh, yeah. 50% of the family ain't bad at all. It's always great to have one of the great Terps of all time, Keith Booth, here. Thanks for stopping Thanks in. Robert. This Thanks. is right. the Viner Four Gates postgame show. We will be back with Mason and Jake after this break. Thanks for being on. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. As we all know, time is money. That's where our fully managed approach to IT can help. With proactive remote monitoring and management, we're able to keep tabs on your IT infrastructure 24-7, 365 days a year. Want to learn more? Drop us a line today to see exactly how we can help keep your systems running smoothly and keep you focused on what matters most, growing your business. Back at Royal Farms Arena, or as Bruno Sammartino called it, it's the Civic Center. Remember that? Yes, sir. The All Civic right. Center, 55-41 Maryland over Loyola, Chicago. The Prince of Baltimore is here. It's Ernie Graham. Hey, Ernie, the game that you were referring to, was that the Matha when you defeated them? No, actually we played against uh, Who was it the team you out of Philadelphia, the uh, running boys, Gene Banks. Simon uh, Gratz? No, uh, West Philadelphia. That was like for number one in the nation, yeah, right? Yeah, they were the top team in the nation. Right. They had uh, five guys, six, seven. Lift her up. Five, six, seven guys. They were great. Uh, actually, I'm still friends with some of those guys. Right. So what did you think of the game today? Uh, Sticks and Bruno got to learn not to give some cheap fouls up. I mean, Sticks barely played 10 minutes, I think. You know, one of the things I'm, I'm most concerned about is the way that they structure the offense. They have those bigs like they did with the other bigs when my son was there, coming out setting screens so far away from the basket, and they're not comfortable doing that. And a lot of times they're still moving, and they're getting those one or two fouls out there, and those are the fouls that they we kill really you. don't well, need. Yeah. Yeah, they called on Loyola Chicago. They called it on Maryland. 
Everybody's running the high screen, and they probably called six of those fouls. The refs did today. Right. It hurt both teams. Ernie, what would you do? Would you make yourself the coach? They're having a little bit of trouble with Sticks and Fernando in the game at the same time. How would you handle that? Would you have high low? What, how would you handle he that must situation? Have high low. Sticks can shoot the three ball. You gotta let him shoot. I think he shot early in the first half, and um, soon as he missed it, you know he's out of the game. Uh, you know, you gotta let them guys make mistakes. Let them guys develop uh, their personalities and develop their confidence. Um, you know, because Sticks can play outside. He's too light to play inside. You know, forget about it. You gotta play him with a big. What better big? Than Fernando, right? So, you know, it's tough to let them develop. They're young. He's very young. He's very, uh, you know, physically immature. He's going to get strong and bigger. And um, until that happens, he has to build his confidence and he has to continue to play, you know, the, the, the perimeter at, at the four position when it's available. Today, you got to be happy with the guard play after not so great the other day against Purdue. Thank God. Right. You know, um, <laughs> I think that uh, that's also another maturation process uh, with the guards because they're also young. They got all these young kids, and so they don't quite understand as they will down the road. These are the games that you want to get them ready so when it March comes, when the tournament times comes, that they're mature, developed mentally and physically uh, to, to meet the chip. Yep. Uh, Ricky Lindo starting to look like he can actually play. It's taken him, what's it been, seven games, eight games? Yes. And now he gave some valuable minutes. Turgis Defensively got to expand, was better than he has been. He's He's got to expand that bench. You can't go through the season with six Absolutely guys. Absolutely not. Especially with 20 Big Ten games. Wow, and the strength of the, of the teams in the Big Ten, you're going to, like today, foul issues. You got two situations. One, you, you got to teach guys how to play with fouls because sometimes you got to keep them on the floor. Mm -hmm. And other times... You got to have guys on the bench that understand, you know, their roles and, and are, you are used to playing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's tough because, you know, you got to mix it. And coaching is, is not easy. That's why they get the big bucks. That's why. Go. Wayne, anything else for Ernie? No, I know everybody's got to get going. We have a press conference to get to. We got to get Mason on. So, right. Ernie, thanks for being on. All right. As always. And, and thanks for hosting us here in Baltimore. We know it's your town. We're hey. just living in it. Welcome it's to our town, right, it's our, it's our town, right, Ernie? It's our town, right, baby? All right. We'll be All back right. in a moment. Right. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Back here on the Viner Four Gates post game show, Jake McDowell joins me. 55 to 41. What were your thoughts? I mean, it it was certainly an ugly offensive performance. Um, both teams came out of the gate really slow, and then you saw at one point, I think it was a little over midway for the first half, Maryland started to get like I believe an eight to two run at one point, and I think that it wasn't really a momentum shift, but you could start to see Maryland getting a groove going. And I think as the game went on, they got better and better. Um, Defensively, I mean, this was my first time seeing the Terps in person. Bruno Fernando is every bit as advertised. Four blocks. He had a number of key moments in the game. I know he had the two fouls early on, but I was impressed with what I saw. Yes, you would like the scoring to be a little bit higher, but when you hold uh, Final Four team from last year to 41 points, I think that's a good deal. Yeah, the crowd today, you're a Baltimore guy. You've been to a lot of events here. It was a small one, but... You know, I kind of like this place. You know, this isn't my number one arena, but what do you think as a guy who it is their number one arena? It's, people always say, you know, the Royal Farms Arena is, it's not the best arena in the world. It, it technically is not a circle like most arenas are. And you can't help but get like a, a nostalgic feel to it. It's, it. It is unique. Yes, it would be nice to have like all these flashy scoreboards and all these LED lights everywhere. Um, but this is a, a staple of Baltimore. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they do decide maybe build a new arena eventually but as long as we still have it here i mean it, it's a good for a variety of things and i think it's a good thing too to tie the city of baltimore together with maryland because it is hard for some of people to get over to college park like myself a little, little bit farther away but um crowd on hand at least for the lower deck was all full um and the fans were loud and it was a really good attendance uh, look today so the four of us were sitting there and we were commenting a lot on the Loyola Chicago coaching. Mm -hmm. They were taking guys out rapidly, kind of that old Mark Turgeon uh, style of mass subbing. What were your thoughts on him? 
I mean, as somebody who's worked in sports info offices before, who's had coaches sub sometimes over a hundred times a game. I mean, that's kind of hard to do in basketball. Back in the back in the women's <laughs> lacrosse <laughs> yeah. days. So. Yes, that's exactly the sport. Um, it, it, I just don't get it. Um, you just don't have a consistent rotation. Of, I mean, it, you constantly are rotating people in and out, but people's legs aren't fresh. And when you have all these different combinations together, I mean, there's not a lot of, I guess, chemistry when you have all these players rotating in, in and out. Um, it is certainly interesting. It makes things very chaotic, and you just have to wonder if some of the opposing players just have all this stuff running through their head in addition to, if I do screw something up, I'm going to be pulled right away. You can't help but wonder that. Yeah, it was... Uh I just I really didn't know what to think about it because when a lot of people say Turgeon subs a lot, but if you didn't see the game, it was every time. Every mm -hmm. time a guy for Loyola Chicago made a bad play, a play that the coaches didn't like, he was gone. Mm -hmm. Five seconds away from a timeout, ten se like I mean there was a point right before the eight minute timeout where he pulled the guy out. You couldn't wait forty more seconds. That's just the way it was, even though the leading score for for Loyola Chicago tonight was a big man, he still pulled him out every time. Jake, uh, the, into the Ravens season, tell us about the Charm City podcast. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Charm City Birdwatch is the show. Um, we are charmcitybirdwatch.com. Our podcast is on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And actually, this week, we had a good episode uh, for some Orioles fans out there. As we know, Michael Elias and Sig Meidel are the new front office representatives of the Orioles. I had the author of Astro Ball on, uh, Ben Ryder, who wrote a book about how the Astros went from last place to World Series champions in three years. He actually, a Sports Illustrated columnist, he predicted in 2014 that the Astros would win the World Series in 2017, and they did, using all this analytics and new technology. And any Orioles fans out there, if you're wondering what exactly Elias and Mydell are going to be implementing with analytics and technology and the reboot of the Orioles, check out the podcast, episode 28 on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And 55 to 41, not, not too much to say tonight from Royal Farms Arena. So we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you to Viner Forgates for sponsoring it. Terps top Loyola Chicago, 55 to 41. Good night.